Okay, we are back here at the Stanford School of Business, and this time we are here with Frank Ramirez of Fort Collins, Colorado, right? And you are, well, there's a lot of uh, credentials that you come with, and I'm going to try to remember all of them. You are an alumnus of, an undergrad alumnus of Stanford. That's correct. You also are, you got your MBA here at the School of Business. That's correct. Right? And then you got another degree at Berkeley. I got a law degree at Berkeley. Very good, very good. And you also are a serial entrepreneur. That's correct. So, a very impressive resume. And you're coming also all the way from Colorado to be here at the launch of Alban. So, tell us a little bit about why is it so important for you to come all this way to this event? Well, I think first and foremost, um, at, a, at a macro level, um, there's a, there's a, I think there's a well-known understanding in the country that small business people account for the greatest percentage of jobs that are created in the United States. And that Latinos are, by and large, um, very significant in, the, in running small entrepreneurial efforts. But there's a problem. Latino entrepreneurs typically run very small businesses that don't scale and that typically remain small family-oriented businesses that typically only serve Latino, the Latino community. So the question really has to be asked, why is it that Latinos haven't scaled businesses? And I think number one issue is that they lack access to capital. Number one, first and foremost, um, they, they, they typically don't have the kind of access to people with money or relationships to banks that would provide them a way of financing their company so they, so they remain small. Secondly, uh, Latinos lack what I'll call something called class resources. And this is, this is more subtle. This is, this is the ability to speak the language of finance. This is the, this is the, ability, the lack of ability to uh, enter into those uh, clubs and communities where business is often transacted and where deals are often struck. And, the, and that combination of lack of capital and lack of class uh, or access to class resources um, has been a significant impediment in growing large and scalable Latino businesses. And our objective at ALBA is to provide uh, access to, as a bridge of resources, to Latino entrepreneurs who lack one or two of those elements that I addressed to help them to grow large and successful businesses, to create true wealth in our community. Yeah. Well, that's exciting, and, I, and, and really, I don't know that anyone's articulated it the way you have, but that, uh, to me, that resonates, and especially the power networking, I'll call it power networking, when you call it the class, um, I forget how you described it exactly. Class resources. Class resources, but, but you're right, it's like having access to the right folks with the right relationships that are going to help you um, talk about what the opportunities that may be lie in front of you um, that you're not necessarily seeing, but with those resources, those folks, then you have access to them. How does one enter or engage in large government contracts? How does one write grant proposals? How does one structure channel relationships for the sale of one's product? Um, if one isn't part of the club, if one doesn't have access to those resources, almost by definition, one is relegated to running a smaller operation that doesn't scale as quickly or possibly can't scale at all. Yeah. Absolutely. So Frank, can you tell us a little bit about maybe how you've navigated these waters yourself and how it's, you know, the process has been for you? I think first and foremost, I had a tremendous advantage in having had one of the finest educations in the world. And in the process of obtaining that education, I was able to establish relationships with the children of the captains of industry, where we formed personal relationships that 
grew over time. And as I started my own businesses, as I first began a career in finance, I also interacted with other children, the captains of industry, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And over time, those personal relationships enabled me to leverage access to those people and to those networks because I'd become one of them through the force of pure education. Um, donning the cloak of respectability that that education gave me sure. uh, and having the passion for building um, I was able to, through a lot of hard work of people that came long before me, leverage their work to be able to draw into my ventures people who provided reach into the government, provided channels for distribution, provided um, quantitative assistance, provided the ability to understand and build cap structures. Uh, provided access to large amounts of capital. Um, not everybody has the opportunity to obtain uh, the kind of degrees that I've had the great fortune to obtain. But it is possible for us, we believe, to surround entrepreneurs with, who have great ideas with infrastructure and resources to enable them to grow highly profitable and scalable businesses. Right here. Well, it's exciting to, I, I believe you're one of the folks that's on the, the committee or the, the board that's putting this together. I've, I've, I've had the great fortune to join a few people um, to informing the initial Alban board. Very good. And we're in the process of attracting some extraordinary people, and one of those individuals is someone that you'll hear from next, Gil Cisneros. Very good, very good. Well, it's, it's exciting to know that someone like you is also helping form the Alban uh, initiative, the missions, the goals, and, and we look forward to many more uh, meetings with Alban and, uh, and doing our part to support and feature the work that you all do. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much for being with us this evening, and I'll see you a little later tonight. Thank you very much.